Hello, my name is Arkady Nagic, I am a chess grandmaster and in the next series of videos we are going to take a look at positional sacrifices. There are a lot of different positional sacrifices, usually it is a sacrifice of a pawn, sometimes of several pawns, then the next common sacrifice is a sacrifice of an exchange, then it's as well possible to sacrifice a piece and in rare cases it is a sacrifice of a rook or even of a queen. First, we're gonna start with positional sacrifices of a pawn. This is the most common topic. There are a lot of different pawn sacrifices which can be made. It is a sacrifice for a better development or maybe just to disturb the development of the opponent. As well, it can be a sacrifice for domination, sacrifice to open opponent's king's position. So we have a lot of different kind of sacrifices. We're going to start with my own game, which I recently played in the Bundesliga, it is a game against a very experienced opponent, his name is Pavel Spevak. He is not a very strong, but he is a very solid IM. I think it is an interesting game to watch, I managed to make a nice positional sacrifice and was aiming for a domination. Of course, to a positional sacrifice, some context is quite an important topic, how it came that this sacrifice was even possible. So we're gonna take a short look first how it came to this sacrifice and then we're gonna take of course a more detailed look at what actually the sacrifice has brought me. In general there are a few things that we need to know for positional sacrifices. Positional sacrifice is more or less a long-term investment. We are not gaining something immediately but we are hoping to gain a lot in the future. So the game being a Sicilian, Paulsen with fifth knight d5. It's not very often played move, but I like this variation. c4, a6, knight a3, bishop e7. Basically, we are having sort of hedge hawk, but an unusual one. The main idea of white is in this position clearly to build up a solid center, and as usual in hedge hawks, black will try to attack the center. Till here is of course nothing new, this is basically a theory and there are a lot of games played here. Rook ad1, this move I introduced I think like 5 years ago, it's been a novelty, but of course right now it's a very common played move. Knight c5 as well, the main move for black, of course white is not able to take on c5 here because black is just taking back and I can't take the piece on b7 because of knight a5 and my queen got no squares to go. So queen c2, bishop f6, knight b1, till here is everything pretty normal. The main idea of white is somewhere to play a3, b4. And a black knight from c5 will probably have to go back to d7. So my opponent continued with queen c7, pretty standard. a3, rook a c8, rook d2, knight d7, because the knight has to go back in any case. And black is of course focusing a bit on the c file. The pawn c4 could get at some point in trouble. So of course I need to be very careful. Rook c1, keeping the pawn c4 under control. Queen b8 as well, a very typical development for hedge hawk. Queen d1, bishop e7, f4, knight a5. Attacking the c4 pawn, so I really have to play b3 to protect the c4 pawn. Queen a8. As we all know, it's very common in hedge hawk to put the queen on a8. First of all, it looks a bit passive on a8, but on the other hand, it's attacking directly the pawn e4 which is quite unpleasant. As well, I need to be very careful with the move b5, which is usually one of the main ideas for black. I played bishop g2. So already here, black had the possibility to take the pawn on e4. But just a move later, we're gonna take a look a bit closer to that. g6, quite a nice prophylactical move. It can be very useful for black to have the pawn on g6. It's avoiding at some point moves as f5 and just the king gets a bit safer. So here comes the moment of the positional sacrifice. I played bishop f1. I think it's a quite tricky move. 
Of course, I'm giving the pawn e4, and the pawn gonna be taken. As well, bishop f1 is usually a nice development. Somewhere I want to play maybe g3 with the idea bishop g2, or just rook e2. Even this is an option to defend the pawn e4. And then go knight 1, d2 with the idea of playing b4 later. So finally my c4 pawn would be protected and I'm able to play b4. So my opponent takes on e4 as well. Of course, one of the main possibilities been to play b5. It leads to a very sharp position after c5. So bishop e4, the bishop has to be taken. Queen take e4. And this is our starting position for the positional sacrifice. I am a pawn down, but I'm having bishop pair, plus I'm dominate a bit in the center, and the black knights on a5 and the knight on d7 are not perfectly placed. First of all, I'm playing b4. Before move needs to be done at some moment, I'm winning some space, I'm controlling the c5 square, and I'm attacking the knight. Knight b7. Maybe not the best. I think knight c6 would have been a better idea. The knight on b7 is gonna be very passively placed. But as well, after knight c6, black has to be very careful with the queen on e4. The queen got almost no moves, and even after a simple move as g3, black queen is a big danger to get trapped. Knight b7, still I continue with g3. My threat is of course just to play bishop g2 next, which would almost catch the black queen. Queen c6, the most usual, knight c3. So I continue the development of my pieces. I have in mind somewhere, of course, playing bishop g2, but I need to be very little bit careful with the pawn on c4. Queen c7, queen a4, attacking the a6 pawn. As we can see, white starts to dominate the game, but of course I am a pawn down. Knight b8, the pawn has to be protected. Of course, it's quite unpleasant to make a move as rook a8. The rook on a8 would be standing very passively, and as well, after bishop g2, black could have some problems on the long diagonal. So, knight b8, rook c2. As well, a very solid move. It's clearly one of my main ideas to push somewhere c5. In case I can, it would be very good, but of course, c5 is a move which I can't do immediately because black could just take b takes c5, b takes c5 and knight takes c5. So I need to wait for a good moment. Rook cd8, bishop g2. I continue to improve the position of my pieces. Bishop f6, knight e4, bishop g7. So basically all my pieces are greatly placed. I don't think I can make a big improvement on the queen side. C5 still is not really an option. Black can always play b takes c5, b takes c5, and d5. And of course the black center would be very solid, especially knight c6 is coming next. So here I would be just worse with white. So I need to find a new way how to get some benefits from my great domination in the center. What is good for white? Black not really has an idea what to do next. b5 is never working, d5 is never working. As well, the knights are very passively placed on b8 and b7, especially the knight on b7 just has no moves. So I think I played a nice move, g4. The idea of g4 is very simple. Somewhere I'm having bishop h4. As well, the idea of playing f5 could be unpleasant for black. My opponent keeps on waiting, rook e8, h3, another prophylactical move. I thought I'm not really in a rush, because black doesn't really have any concrete ideas of how to free themselves. Queen is once again as well not moving, because b6 is just hanging. So I didn't feel that I'm in really time pressure. h3, king h8, king h1. I just keep on going to improve a bit the position of my pieces. And of course I keep the ideas of playing bishop h4 and f5 in mind. Rook c8, black keeps on waiting. So I thought now it's really time for f5. My opponent plays bishop a5, quite a logical reply. 
to take on f5 is looking very dangerous. I can just take back. And in case black takes back on f5, I have a few options. One of them is to play knight g3, following by knight take f5. And as well, the option of playing knight c3 is looking very tempting. My knight could go next to d5. And of course, in case black would play knight c3, bishop takes c3 to avoid knight d5. Rook takes c3. The black king on h8 would feel very uncomfortable. I have a lot of ideas of playing next moves as bishop d4 followed by rook g3. So the position of black is really dangerous even having two pawns up. So after bishop e5 I took on e6, fe and played bishop e3. Another solid move. Black somewhere maybe wanted to play bishop f4. Not necessarily immediately, but it could be an option. So I improve once again a bit the position of my bishop. And of course, I still keep the main idea to play c5 in mind. Rook f8, as well very logical. Black is putting the rook on a free file. And queen b3. So now I really threat playing c5. e6 pawn would hang. And as well, moves as d5 for black could not always protect everything. And finally, my opponent is making a mistake to play knight d8. Black should have kept maybe just on waiting with moves as maybe rook c e8. Still, the position, of course, is very unpleasant, but it's a fight. After knight d8, finally, it is a moment when actually I am gaining something back from the positional pawn sacrifice. So for all these moves, which has been done, we sacrificed a pawn on move 23 by playing bishop f1. And now finally on move 38, we are gaining something from it. c5. Finally, this move is working very well. Black has basically no choice than to take b takes c5. Of course, moves as d5 are not working of many reasons. One of the reasons could be just simply c take b6 and there are pieces hanging on the c file, black is just losing immediately. So b takes c5 is the only option, b takes c5 back, and d5 as well here, black doesn't really have any option to take on c5 as losing on the spot because of just rook takes c5, d5, and knight d6. I'm using the moment that black cannot take on d6, because after bishop take d6, c take d6, once again black would lose a lot of material on the c file. My opponent had to play knight d c6, I took on c8, queen takes c8, and basically I find myself with an exchange up in close to a winning position. As we just saw, it was basically a long-term pawn sacrifice, which I didn't try to gain something immediately. And uh, by pushing c5 or attacking the black king, I slowly dominated the game and waited for the right moment to get my long-term investment back. And of course, I benefited a lot. I sacrificed a pawn and finally I won an exchange for it with a clearly much better position. Another nice example on positional sacrifice of a pawn I had in my game from 2012 against the German Grandmaster Philipp Schlosser. The game started with d4, d5, c4, d takes c4, knight f3, a6, a rare move, but we don't want to focus on the opening part. Bishop b4. So now we have sort of Vienna opening. But with a4, a6 included, bishop c4, knight take e4, short castle, white is giving a pawn for a better development, for a long-term compensation. Knight f6, bishop g5, short castle, queen e2. The idea of white is quite simple, to put rook a d1, somewhere maybe knight e5, and to start the attack on the black king. As well, of course, white needs to avoid to give an opportunity to black to develop the pieces of the queen side in a nice way. Philip Schlosser continued with c6, a very solid move. He's trying to block somewhere white from playing d5, rook a d1, bishop e7, 
knight e5. Till here I think it's all pretty logical and as well we can see here nicely what is a positional pawn sacrifice. White is pawned down but white is dominating the game and of course white is planning to continue with the attack on the king side. Knight d5, bishop c1. Of course in case you want to start an attack you should not exchange the pieces. Knight d7, black knight might go to f6. And as well, of course, knight take e5 helps black a bit to get a free space. Rook e1, I continue bringing all my pieces inside the game. Philip Schlosser is playing knight take e5, d take e5. But well, now the d file is sort of little open. And of course, white is having a nice knight e4 move. Queen c7. Black wants to play rook d8 and somewhere to exchange at least a rook over the d file. I am playing rook d3. Again, a very logical move. I am bringing the rook into the attack. And as we can see, an uh, extra pawn, let's say, take the pawn on c6, doesn't really help black much. White has a pawn down, but white is clearly dominating the game. Rook d8, rook h3 with a simple idea of playing queen h5 next, with a mating attack on the king side. g6, avoiding the queen h5, but as well after queen f3, black is already almost lost. White is threatening to play rook h7 next. My opponent plays knight takes c3, b takes c3. Right now, move as rook h7 is not really working, so I have to take first b takes c3, but I have all time in the world. Still, the threat of rook h7 is in the air. Black is trying to escape with bishop f8 to get a bit of queen attention on f7. But now, after bishop g5, the rook on d8 is hanging. And white wants to play next bishop f6 with the idea of rook take h7. Philip Schlosser tries to sacrifice the exchange on d5. But I'm not very interested in his exchange. I'm going much more for his king. Bishop f6. The threat of rook h7 is in the air. Black tries bishop d7 at least to develop something. Better later than never. But in this game it's basically never. Rook e4. A nice finishing move. Black doesn't have any options to avoid rook h7 with a straight mate. Let's say black would play bishop e8, white would take on h7, king h7, rook h4, bishop h6, of course king g8 is losing on the spot because of rook h8 mate, bishop h6, rook take h6, king take h6, and queen h3 with a mate. So. If we take a look once again on the positional sacrifice, we started with bishop takes e4, giving the e4 pawn for the better development. And slowly but surely we came to more space advantage. And the space advantage brought us a very strong king attack. Black king is basically alone fighting all the white pieces. What we just saw is as well a very typical example on positional pawn sacrifice for a better development for domination in the center, which finally led to a mating attack on the black king.